Oh, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Are you familiar with what an Arduino board does? Do you know how to connect it? Do you know how to program it? Well, to answer all those questions, watch our previous video. Tap the link up here or here, up here, and watch that video because that video will help you understand this week's video on traffic lights. Enjoy! Hi, welcome to this video, which is a continuation of the Arduino series. In the previous video, we learned about the Arduino board. We learned how to use the software and we learned how to connect the two of them to your computer. And then we did a small test program. We did not explain what's going on within the program, but we did a small test program to turn a light on the board on and off. And that showed us that our board, the Arduino physical board, was communicating to the software on the Arduino. In today's lesson, we are going to be extending that functionality outside of the Arduino board. We'll be connecting some very simple lights to the Arduino board and using a breadboard and LEDs. LEDs are light emitting diodes. If you don't know what either a breadboard or an LED is, please make sure you watch our very simple introduction to electronics video that will give you an oversight of what we are looking at. So let's get started. So just to recap, the Arduino board is connected to your computer using a USB cable. In my case, I'm going to add an extra connector because I use USB-C, but for most of you, this should be able to plug in directly to the computer. Now, the really interesting thing is because the Arduino board doesn't change its code as when you remove the power supply from it, if you're using the same Arduino board, you will still see that your program is running. And in this case, you'll see that our light is turning on and on because the existing program that we had written is still on the Arduino board. All it needed was power. So you should be able to see this turning on and off. What we're going to do next is connect our external LED using a breadboard. We are not going to change the program yet, but we are going to see that we can convert, we can connect that light to an external light, and then the two of them will be blinking in sync, meaning that they'll be blinking together. Let's do that. All right, so we have a breadboard. This breadboard is going to help us connect all the components that we'll be working with. So um, what we're going to do first is we're going to connect the positive side of the breadboard, this positive length of connections and these negative lengths of connections, to our Arduino so that we are not filtered, we are not moving back and forth. Um, so again, like I mentioned in the electronics video, generally black wires stand for ground or negative, red wires stand for positive. So we are going to connect the red to the 5V. If you look on your Arduino board, you'll see different letters written next to this pin, next to, next to this row of ports or this row of pins, right? So each represents what will happen when you connect to it. So if you look closely, you'll see that there's something here that says 3.3 V and there's something that says five volts. So 3.3 V means that if you connect a wire to that pin, you're going to get 3.3 volts into that wire or out of that wire. If you connect it to the five, you're going to get five volts out of that wire. So in our case, we're going to get, we're going to connect it to the five volt pin. So we'll just look for the five volt, which is this one here, and we'll connect it there. Then we'll also now look for the one labeled GND. GND stands for ground. So generally with electricity, if it's direct current, which we shall go into in another lesson, you either have a positive or a negative. So in this case, we have a positive, which is our 5V, and GND typically stands for ground or negative. So we're going to connect this to the negative or the GND. So the two of them are here. If you look closely, you'll see that the black um, jumper wire is connected to the GND pin and the red jumper wire is connected to the 5V pin. Make sure you get that right before you move forward. So now we're going to connect it to the breadboard. Your breadboard typically has a row of pins that run vertically on the sides and then horizontally in the middle. Watch the breadboard video, please. Um, so we'll use 
this first line that's marked positive, your breadboard might not have the markings, but just know that as long as you connect it to the first outer one, then all the pins in the first outer one will be connected to that positive. And then we'll connect the negative to the second outer one. Again, make sure that you have actually watched the breadboard video, because if you connect this here, you're going to end up damaging your Arduino board. So be very careful, watch that video. So now that we have that, we have a power supply coming from the Arduino board to the breadboard, and anything that we connect to these two outer rows will be connected to either the positive or the negative of the Arduino board. So next we are going to connect our LED using a resistor. The resistor is purely to protect the LED. It's good electronics practice to always protect your electronics components. Um, so in this case, we are going to connect it from the positive um, row. And we shall connect it to one other side of the breadboard. And then we shall connect our LED to that side of the breadboard. And then connect it back to the negative. So in this case, we now have confirmed that we have a steady power supply. So what we have done is we've connected this directly to the negative and the positive that's coming out of the Arduino board. We haven't yet connected it to this light here that is blinking. Now, before we do that, we'll talk a little bit about Arduino pin. All right, so we're going to take a minute to talk about the different pins on the Arduino board, and we'll just use a schematic. So this is a very reduced version of what the Arduino board looks like. Um, you have your power supply here, you have your USB connection here, you have your reset button here, and again, we covered all of this in the previous video. However, this row of black pins where we, where we, we have inserted our wires, each single one of these pins has a specific function, and we'll learn about these pins later as we go on. But right now, I just want us to focus on a few of them. The first is the ones that I mentioned before, the 3.3 volts, the 5V, uh, the ground. You have two ground supplies, and then you also have another 5V. Um, but for now, what we've connected our pins to are the power supply, the 5V, so that we get positive 5 volts and then to the ground where we get a negative um, uh, connection to the power supply. On this other side, you have digital pins, right? We're going to focus on the digital pins for now. So you have pins labeled 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, all the way to zero, right? So pin 13 is directly connected to this light. You remember the light that we turned on and off? So pin 13, is a connection to that specific light. So everything we connect to pin number 13 will behave the same way as this light that is on the board directly. It, the light is on the board because it's a good way to test your Arduino board without having to connect anything external. It's a good way to make sure that everything is working. But in case you want to connect something external that behaves the same way as the light on that board, you connect it to pin number 13. So coming back to our board, previously we had connected this side, which is basically negative, because remember that this resistor here is coming from the positive of the Arduino, going into the resistor, going into the LED, and then coming out to the negative here. All right, so that's a direct connection to the Arduino power supply. However, if we want to connect it to this LED, one thing that you have to remember is that all of these digital pins get a positive power supply. So that means that anything you connect here must be on the positive side of the electrical circuit, which means we need to readjust how this resistor is connected. Okay? So we're going to disassemble all of this again. So what we're going to do is that now we're going to move the resistor from the positive side. Again, remember that resistors don't really care in which 
in which area of the, of the circuit you put them in as long as they're right next to the component that they are protecting. So you can connect it to the negative side of the LED or the positive side of the LED. So in the first instance, we had connected it to the positive side of the LED. In this case, we're going to switch it to the negative side. And we are doing this so that we can connect the positive side of the LED to pin number 13. All the digital pins give out a positive signal, which means that the other side of the component has to be connected to the negative signal. So now we're going to connect the resistor to the negative and then put it into this section of the breadboard and then we'll grab our LED, connect it like that. And just to test, we will get this other side of the LED and connect it to the positive. So now that's fine. We have this side of the resistor coming from the negative of the Arduino board going into the negative of the um, LED. And then on the other end, we have the positive that's expecting a connection to the positive signal. When we connect it directly to the power supply, it lights. Now, we are going to connect to pin number 13. Again, remember that pin number 13 is positive, so make sure you've understood that step very well. If you haven't, please go back and just rewatch it again. So we look for pin number 13, and it's right here. And now we see that our LED is blinking in the same pattern as what's on the board. So just to test that everything is fine, we are going to adjust our code again to make sure that this pattern by this big LED on the breadboard is following the same pattern by the small LED on the Arduino board. All right, so let's look at our code again, um, just to make sure that we have a good connection. And also just to show you that whatever code we change here will affect this LED and this LED at the same time. So again, we are not yet quite describing what's going on in our code. We're just changing a couple of things. Um, so first thing I need to do is make sure that the Arduino board is actually connected so we'll look at the port, it is connected to port seven, it's been recognized. Then we look at the board itself, it is still Arduino Uno, and that's fine. So we have everything that's running. Um, let's change the um, program to, let's do, let's change this delay, this figure to 50 and this figure to 100. Again, we will explain what's going on in this a little bit later. So we upload and then we watch and see what's happening. And now we can see that our light is blinking much faster, but the two are blinking in sync. And that's simply because pin number 13 is getting the exact same signal that's going to the board and bringing it into our LED. So, um, just to confirm that again, we are going to do another pattern. We'll change that to 200 and change this to 1000. Click upload and see. So now we have a different pattern. So your Arduino software is communicating very, very clearly to the Arduino hardware. And now you have external devices or external components running off of the Arduino board. So this is actually the very, very fast step. Blinking an LED externally is the first step of learning how to connect external electrical components to an Arduino board. You can extend this to control almost anything that you can conceive. You can use it to control electric motors, you can use it to control lights, you can use it to control um, switches, you can use it to send and receive signals. What you have done at this stage is understand that the Arduino system can control external components. Obviously, the more complex your electronics projects get, the more things you'll need, but generally this is the first step to understanding that the Arduino board can control um, components externally. So we are going to go a little bit into the code just to understand what's going on. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the software and I'm going to explain the example that we've used and then dive a little bit deeper into how you can write your own code without having to edit examples all the time. So every time you go into the Arduino environment, you can open all sorts of examples 
This example we are using for this, to turn this light on and off is called a blink. You find it under basics and blink. So it will, it will present the exact same code that we've been using. You can look at all sorts of example code once you get more advanced, but for now the example code we are looking at is blink. It has a lot of information, but I want to simplify everything that it's doing in a way that makes it easy for you to understand. So for now, we've mostly been looking at changing these values. And now I want us to write our own that will allow us to understand the code a little bit better. All right, so what we're going to do is create a new Arduino program or a new Arduino sketch. So an Arduino, a new Arduino file is called a sketch. Um, so we'll create a new sketch. Now I've created a blank sketch, but when you create a new one, it will come with um, these little things inserted for you. I want you to understand what's going on. So we're going to start from scratch. So we'll just close this, but this is just to show you that when you create a new one, this is what it will show you. And it will be easy to continue using this once you've understood. It's actually really helpful. But for now, let's start from a blank slate. All right, so the first section of the Arduino code that you're going to write is written through a function called void setup. And you do that and that. So the void setup is void basically to keep it simple, void basically says that this is a function that we are creating. A function is a series of instructions that are grouped together and can be executed as one single unit, right? To explain that a little bit better. Um, imagine you have a morning routine. You wake up, you um, go take a shower or brush your teeth, you lay your bed, put on your clothes, take your breakfast and leave the house that entire series of routines can be simplified into a simple function called get ready for work, right? When, when I tell you get ready for work, you immediately say, okay, I need to wake up, I need to take a shower, I need to brush my teeth, I need to put on clean clothes, I need to take my breakfast, and I need to leave the house, right? So all those different instructions have been simplified into the one instruction that says get ready for work. So that's how functions work. When I give the computer a simple command that says do x and x is a function, then it will look into the program I've written for where the instructions within that function are. So if I tell it get ready for work, it will say what does get ready for work mean? And then it will see that oh, you have to wake up and then it will execute the wake up function. You have to brush your teeth, it will execute the, the brush your teeth function. You have to um, put on clean clothes, take a shower, so it will execute each of those in the sequence in which you have instructed it. And then when it leaves the house, the, wake, the get ready for work function is over and it waits for the next instruction. So functions are very, very helpful ways for, um, for like packaging or collecting tasks that can be done hundreds or even thousands of times and packaging it into one nice little instruction. So imagine if you have a weekly routine, right? And every single day, you know that you have to get ready for work, right? There's no point in writing all the instructions for get ready to work every single day. So instead of saying Monday, brush your teeth, put on clean clothes, take a shower, blah, 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 blah. Tuesday, wake up, brush your teeth, take a shower, put on clean clothes, blah, 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 blah. Wednesday, blah, 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 blah. Thursday, in this case, you just say Monday, get ready for work. Tuesday, get ready for work. Wednesday, get ready for work. That's what functions are. And functions are very, very important in programming. And once you understand how functions work, you'll make your programming life very easy. So void setup, it's basically saying, run this function called setup, right? And these brackets can represent what we call parameters. We'll not get into the details right now. But right now it's saying, run the function called setup. And in this setup, we are giving it additional instructions. So in this case, we are going to give one instruction for the setup function. We are going to give an instruction called pin mode. So pin mode is another function that basically says, 
this is what I want this pin on the Arduino board to do, right? I want it to have this mode. So typically pins on the Arduino board can have two modes primarily, either an input, meaning that it's receiving signals from an electronic device, or output, meaning it's sending signals to an electronic device. So for example, if you have a microphone connected on pin number 12, right? Um, as, a, as an example, if you have a microphone connected to pin number 12, microphones record sound and send them somewhere. So when you connect that to an Arduino, it's an input into the Arduino. So in this case, you'll tell the Arduino, make pin number 12 an input because I'm expecting signals from a certain device into pin number 12. LEDs do not receive signals, they emit light, right? So they are outputs. So in this case, you'd say, make pin number 13 an output because I'm expecting to send a signal out of the Arduino into another electronic device. So the pin mode defines what you want a certain pin to be, either it's an input or an output. In this case, we're going to say pin number 13, we want it to be an output. And then we close that, sorry. All right, very simple function, setup, pin number 13 is an output. Now, everything that you write in the setup function, in the setup section of your code, will run once. When you press the power, when you connect it, when you press the reset, when you connect it to power, when you power up your Arduino for the first time or whatever time, as long as it's receiving power for the first time, or as long as it's being reset, the, the setup function will run once and stop. The next section is the loop function, which is void loop. Also written in a similar way to the setup function. The loop function will run over and over and over and over and over again. As long as the Arduino has power, the loop function will keep running. If you've noticed, our LED has been blinking on and off, on and off throughout this entire time I've been talking. That's because it's running the loop function. It's being turned on and off, on and off through the software, so through the program or through the code that we have written in the loop function. So in this case, we are going to look at what's inside the loop function. So for the loop function, we are going to write a very simple command that says digital write. So digital write is a command that basically tells the Arduino that I want you to write or to send a digital signal somewhere. So digital write is basically telling the Arduino send a signal or write a signal somewhere. And we're going to see where that somewhere is shortly. So in this case, we're going to tell it, write a digital signal to pin number 13 and make it high. All right. So we have said, we want you to take pin number 13 and send an, a command to make that high. Right. Now, digital versus analog. All right. Keep it simple again. Digital signals are typically two values. It's either on or it's off. It's either a one or a zero. It can be zero, one, 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 zero, 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 one, 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 but it's either a zero or a one. So think about it as a light switch. When you switch on that light in your house, the light is either on or off. You're not going to have it half dim, half blah, blah, blah. It's either full or nothing. However, if you look at the sun, the sun rises and sets. Right, So the brightness of the day increases with the position of the sun. So you'll have zero when there is darkness at night, and then you'll have 100% when it's at the top of the sky at noon, and then it goes back to zero. So at any given point in the day, it's somewhere between full brightness and darkness. It can be 50% brightness, 30% brightness, depending on the time of the day. So that's what an analog signal looks like. Its value changes over time in a certain manner. Right? Again, digital is either on or off, zero or one. Analog can be anything from zero to 1,000. It can be 30, it can be 40, it can be X, Y, blah, 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 whatever it is. So in this case, we are writing a digital signal, which means it has one of two values. It's either high or it's low. And we've told pin number 13 
We've told it to make pin number 13 high. So let's upload this code and see what happens to our LED. Click upload. It's asking us to save again. Um, we'll just give it a name. So it will always ask you to save before you upload. And then the upload is complete. And what's our LED showing? It's now on. So the loop command is running. This Arduino system is actually running 16,000 times per second. So in each of those 16,000 times, it's telling it, turn it on, turn it on, turn it on, or make it high, make it high, make it high. So you won't be able to see the, the distinction in on and off. Sorry, you won't be able to see how that code is, is being looped because it's running too fast for us to comprehend. We can sort of visualize by telling it to wait, right? Which we, which we call a delay function. Um, but we'll come into the delay function later. So the next thing that I want to tell it is to turn it off. And you're going to see something very, very interesting. So we're going to do digital right. Again, same command, send a digital signal to pin number 13 and make it low this time. We close that command. We close that, that code, the section of code. Click upload. And what do you see happening to our board? There's actually no change. It's still on. Now, this is what I was explaining a few seconds ago. This software is running 16,000 times per second, which means it's actually being switched on and off 16,000 times. But you can't see it because it's too fast for our eyes, right? So the way that we can sort of slow it down is by telling it, hold on, wait for a few seconds, or wait for a few microseconds or whatever you want, and then um, keep going. So we'll just add, after it has turned it on, we'll tell it, um, we'll tell it wait, and to make it wait, we use a delay, we, call, we use a command called delay, and then give it a number. So the delay, is basically measured in microseconds. So if I do, sorry, milliseconds. So if I do 1,000, I'll be telling it to delay for 1,000 milliseconds, which is the equivalent of one second. So I upload this again, and let's see what happens. Again, nothing is happening, right? This, who, if, 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 if you can guess, just drop, a, drop your answer in the comments, and we'll see if you get it right. Um, but what's happening? is that it's turning the LED on and then waiting for one second and then turning it off. But then it's immediately going back to the beginning of the code and it's turning it on again. So we are not giving it enough time we are to, to allow us to see that it's actually been turned off because it's moving too fast. So it's going here, turning it on, and then waiting for one second, turning it off, and then because it's going 16,000 times per second, in a 16,000th of a second, it's going back up and turning it off. So let's tell it to wait again after it has turned it off. So again, we do a delay, 1,000. And now we are telling it, turn it on, wait for one second, turn it off, wait for one second. And then we upload this. And now we have on, off, on, off. So all of this, sorry, this very simple setup that you're seeing here is actually the same as what you've seen here. It's just that we've reduced it so that you understand. If you look back here, we have the setup, we have a comment, we have the pin mode, and we'll talk about why this is, the, this is a number. Sorry, this is not a number. But basically, it's the same, delay ETC. So we can do what we did before and make this maybe 50 and 100, and then upload, and then we'll see the change in the pattern, All right? So our software is working. The other thing that's happening in the example code that we looked at, um, something called comments. So a comment, is actually really helpful when you're learning how to program, or even when you're a professional programmer. Comments help you understand what's going on in the code, whether it's written by you or someone else. 
but it also helps you remember things that you might have forgotten. Because sometimes you write a program and then three years later you come back to it and you don't even understand what's going on. So Arduino has a, most, if not all programming languages have a commenting system and it varies depending on the language. For Arduino, if you want to write multi-line comments, multi-line comments basically means that you write a comment that can run across multiple lines. You start with a slash, then a star, and then write, um, this is a multi-line, multi-line comment. The minute you press enter, Arduino sort of helps you by ending that comment. So it will make the provision for ending it. But one thing you'll notice is that before this comment ends, you'll see that everything has turned gray, including the comment that we had, in including the code, the actual code that we had written. That is because Arduino is assuming that everything that starts, everything that follows this slash star is a comment because we've given it a multi-line comment. So any line, you can put whatever you want in here. It will be ignored because it assumes that everything is a comment, right? So to end it, you'd have to put a star and a slash, which is the reverse of what happened. And as you can see, our code now has come back to its normal colors. Um, Arduino is very helpful. When you start writing a multi-line comment, it will automatically end it for you. So if I do a star, a slash and a star, and then I press enter, it will automatically finish it for, for us. Because sometimes we forget about these things. So this is a multi-line comment. If you want to do a single line comment, and again, multi-line comments, you can write an entire paragraph or a thesis on this. It won't, it won't matter. As long as it fits, it will just ignore it. Um, if you want to write a single line comment, you just use a double slash. This is a single line comment. And then it will just allow you to write the rest of the code. So you'll see the difference in how you know, this, is, this is written. So again, we'll just um, delete this and we explain what our single line comment is. Um, so this is version one of our um, LED blinking code written by Solomon King at Fundibots. ETC, whatever. And then we can do a single line comment before the void and say the void, the setup function runs once when the Arduino is reset or powered up, right? So you will see that what I'm doing is actually replicating what's going on here. So there's a multi-line comment that had everything that was about the code and then also the setup. So we can keep doing that over and over, but you kind of know the basics. You can explain whatever it is you want to explain later on. So now we are going to go back and do the last part of this um, uh, exercise. So if we upload this, we'll just notice that nothing changes in our code because the only thing that we've added are the comments. So now we are going to do a simple traffic light system, which is basically adding three different lights. We have a yellow already, we're going to add a green, and we're going to add a red, and we'll program those three together. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get three more connections from the outputs or from the digital pins of the Arduino, connect them, and then control them using the software. So now we need to first do the connections, and then write the code. So to recap, we have power coming from the positive of the Arduino going into this positive line, which at this point is not really necessary because we are now getting positive from the pins. So we can simplify this by removing this positive. And then you see it continues to work. That's because the positives, the positive um, power is now being received 
from the pin that we have described as an output, so we don't need this. So now what we have is the negative or the ground coming from the Arduino board going into the breadboard on this rail here or on this, this uh, series of connections going into the resistor. The resistor is connected to the negative side of the LED and on the positive side of the LED we have a wire going into pin number 13. So in this case we are going to choose two additional pins. We'll use pin number 12 and 11 and connect it to these three to these two additional LEDs. But we need to protect every single LED that we have. So we're going to need two additional resistors. Now, we will do the same pattern that we have here. We'll connect one side of the resistor to the negative and then to the other um, section of the breadboard we will get our LED um, is it red green yellow I think yellow is in the middle right um, so we'll just uh, we'll move this yellow from here and put it here and then we'll put the green here Right, so the green is a little bit dim, but I hope you can see that. And then for the third one, and then we'll get, um, we just need to complete this. So to make this simple, let me first do them two at a time. Uh, sorry, one at a time. And then we'll get this negative, sorry, this positive from the other side of the yellow um, LED and connect it to pin number 12. So nothing is happening for the yellow LED because we haven't told that we know what to do with the yellow LED. So let's very quickly tell that we know what to do with the yellow LED. So we go into our code and then we add another pin mode. Pin mode, pin number 12. We define it as an output. And then we can do the same thing here, digital right, pin number 12, make it high. And then next to the one for making it low, we'll do a digital right, pin number 12, and make it low. Just to recap, we've now told it that pin number 13 is an output, meaning it's sending signals to something. In this case, it's the green LED. Then we say pin number 12 is also an output. And the way we've connected this, it will send that output from pin number 12 to the yellow LED. And then in the loop, we are saying turn pin number 13 high, then also turn pin number 12 high. Wait for 50 seconds, 50 milliseconds, then turn pin number 13 low or switch it off and turn pin number 12 low or switch it off and then wait for 100 milliseconds. So let's test that. We have an issue. All right, so we have an error in our code because we did not call, we did not close off this, um, this line of code with that semicolon. These semicolons are very, very, very important. Do not ignore them. They basically tell the, the Arduino software that this particular line of code has reached its end. Let's move to the next line. So because I hadn't told it that, it was now trying to interpret these two commands together and it wasn't making sense. So we upload again. And if it works, now we have both our LEDs turning on and off at the same rate because we've given it the same command. Now the green LEDs are a little bit dim. Some of these LEDs have different energy requirements so it's not a reflection of your code it's just how the led is physically designed and there's nothing you can do about that except maybe to remove the resistor but so that it gets more energy but we don't want to do that and then we'll get the final one which is the red one we'll do the same thing connect it to the negative and this is really where the advantage of breadboards come in because now I know that just this one wire from the negative because I know it's connected to every single 
pin every single hole in this row means that I can just keep connecting things to it. I'll do that. And then let me get another wire. This time we'll connect it to pin number 11 on the breadboard and then put it here. I really cannot stress how important it is that you understand how the breadboards work because if you make a misconnection, you can damage your very expensive Arduino board. So please understand that. So then we'll come back to our cord. Right now again, the red is not blinking because the Arduino doesn't know what to do with pin number 13, sorry, pin number 11. So in this case, we'll tell it again, pin number 11, pin mod, is that it should be an output. So now the Arduino knows to send a signal through pin number 11, and then we'll do another digital write here, do 11, and tell it turn it high, close off that line of code, and then do a digital write here, Pin number 11, turn it low, close up that piece of code, upload. And now we have all of our three lights blinking. So, voila. If you have reached this stage, you have essentially connected three different electronics components to an Arduino board. And you should give yourself props. Now, one thing that you might notice is that you might find that your LED is not working even though you've connected it properly. That is because LEDs or light emitting diodes are polarized. If you don't know what polarized is, go watch our electronics video. They are polarized, meaning that they only allow current to flow a certain way, electrical current to flow a certain way. So if you find that you have one of those issues, it might be because you've connected your LED the wrong side. So just grab it flip it around and it should be fine. So now we have the foundation for building our traffic lights. You have a red light, a green light and a yellow light that's turning on and off. So traffic lights typically you'll have the red for like maybe a few minutes and then the yellow as a warning and then the green for go. So you'll have maybe two minutes for the, for the red telling everyone to stop and then yellow as a warning that gets ready to either stop or go, and then the green telling everyone to go. So you can have two minutes on red, 30 seconds on yellow, um, then maybe two minutes on green, depending on how your traffic is flowing. So we're going to write a very simple variation of that. In this case, we're going to turn the, we're going to start with green, says go for, for, one, for one second. Actually, we'll say go for, yeah, one second, and then and then yellow as a warning for half a second and then red to stop for one second so um now this is where we have something that we're going to add that's called a variable right now you have to keep remembering it's pin number 13 the red one the green one the yellow one and because you're not sure you might keep mixing them up so what we're going to do is add something called a variable. A variable is just a simple giving a convenient name for something complex. Um, so a good example of a variable is a human name, right? So we have in our studio right now someone called Michael, someone called Debbie. If we wanted to refer to Michael, we'd know that Michael's name is Michael. Otherwise, we would be saying, please call if, if I wanted to send someone to call Michael, I would say, please call that small skinny guy who wears dreadlocks and wears glasses and works in the production um, section of Fundibots. But when I say call Michael, everyone knows exactly who Michael is. I don't have to describe Michael physically. So Michael, the name, is a variable for something. So it's a convenient way to refer to something. In programming, variables are really, really important because you can get a huge amount of information 
and just assign it one name. And once you refer to that name, it will be easy for you to, uh, it will be easy for the software to understand that this name represents this other thing. So in this case, I don't have to keep remembering what pin, what, what LED is connected to what um, pin. I just need to define it earlier and say, if you want to light the green LED, just say green LED, as opposed to trying to understand where the green LED is. So just to recap, a variable is a simple way to store a piece of information or data or something and refer to it in a very convenient way. So variables typically have three main things. They have the name of the variable, the type of the variable, and the value of the variable, right? So um, in this case, we are going to very, uh, I'll, 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 I'll explain as we do this. So in this case, we are going to do, and variables can be written anywhere in your code, um, but try and keep things simple. In this case, we're going to put it just before the void so that it runs before the rest of the program. Um, so we'll do an int. So int basically means that the type of variable is an integer, right? And then we'll do, we'll just give it a name. So variables can be named anything you want as long as that name doesn't, is not being used by the software for something else. So for example, you cannot write, you cannot create your own variable and call it pin mod because it will tell you no, pin mod is being used for something else. So in this case, we'll just say um, int green LED in which green LED is the name of our variable and then we'll assign it a value and we'll say green LED is actually pin number 13. Simple as that. So you have the type of the variable, which is an integer. We won't go into the details, but for now, just know that the type of the variable is an integer, which means it's a number. The variable type is a number. The name of the variable is green LED, which is something we have chosen. And then the value of that variable is number 13. So now anywhere where we want to refer to green LED without having to um, remember what number it was, etc. as long as it was written here, that program will know that as long as you see green LED, just know that green LED is pin number 30. So just copy this and you'll see how convenient variables get very, very shortly. We'll copy this and put it here, put it here, and put it here. So now we have the next command that says pin mod green LED is an output. So the minute the program sees green LED, it will ask itself, what is this thing called green LED? Then it will go back up and say, oh, green LED is actually pin number 13. So everywhere it sees green LED, it will automatically replace it with 13. So let's test this and make sure it's working. Nothing should change in our software and in our hardware because it's interpreting it correctly. So as you'll see, everything is fine here. So then we'll create variables for the rest. We'll say um, yellow LED is pin number uh, 12. And then red LED is pin number 11. And then we'll just copy this. and then copy red place it here so if we run our code again nothing fancy should change everything is fine here everything is fine here now this is where you begin to see the importance and uh, benefits that variables give you if for whatever reason I wanted to change the pin number, the pin for the yellow LED, and I say, okay, I don't like its position on pin number 13, oh, sorry, on pin number 12 for the yellow LED because I want to use pin number 12 for something else, I can get it here, remove it from 12, and give it 8, for example. Right? So, I then go to my code, and if I wasn't using a variable, I would have to go to every single place where I've written 12 and replace it with 8. But in this case, because I have a variable, I just go up here and replace it once. So we have basically told it that um, 
the variable called yellow LED, which is an integer, we change it from 12 to 8. So I don't have to change anything here because it keeps referring back to this. So when I click upload, now our yellow LED is connected to pin number 8 without me having to go in and change all of this. So imagine if your software had thousands of lines and you had to replace that eight every single place. You'd get so confused, overwhelmed, etc. It'd probably take you an entire day. But here, I just change it once, and then the rest of the system recognizes that change. So we'll just leave it there because it's working. Um, so now, we are going to write the program for our traffic lights. Um, one of the best ways that you can use comments is to help you think about how you want your software to flow. So, we'll just move all this and say, we'll do a single line comment, right? And say, this is our traffic light sequence. Another single line comment, turn green for one second. And then turn yellow for half a second. And then finally turn red for one second. So these are single line comments, but I've created a sequence that I want to follow. So in this case, I can just keep adding this. So now where I've said, turn green for one second, I get this code. I cut it, paste it here because I'm lazy. Um, and then, of course, after turning it on for one second, I can say turn green for one second, then turn it off. So then I'll do a delay for 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. And then digital right, green LED, low. So now we are turning the green LED, or we are turning the green light high for one second, and then turning it off. Then next, we shall do the yellow light. So turn yellow um, for half a second. So digital right, yellow LED high. Then we wait, delay for 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. And then digital right. In case you're confused, I'm just copying and pasting um, what I've already written. Then turn it off. So you can, you can create spaces. These spaces won't really affect how your code runs. It's just really good for organizing. What it's going to follow is this. And then finally, we turn the, the red, and then delay for one second, and then do another digital right and then turn it low. Um, yeah, that looks good. So we'll just delete all of this because it's not really important at this stage. So we'll just run through the code again. You're turning, this is our traffic light sequence. We are turning green for one second and then turning it off. So digital right, green LED high, wait for one second. Digital right, green LED low. And then immediately green, um, Digital right, yellow LED, high. Then you're turning it on for half a second. Delay for five, uh, 500 mil microsecond, milliseconds. And then digital right, yellow LED, low. Then now the stop sign, uh, turn red for one second. Digital right, red LED, high. Delay 1000, digital right, red LED, low. Let's test our code and see if our traffic light behaves the way that we've programmed it. So we upload. And it's working. So we have this on for one second, green, and then the yellow for half a second, and then red. So just to make sure that we are seeing this a little bit better, let's do five seconds for green. Um, 
two seconds for yellow and then five seconds for red. So in this case, we are saying release the traffic using the green light for five seconds, give a warning sign for two seconds, and then give and then stop them for five seconds. So we upload that. Now we have the green one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And then it switches back. Simple traffic light. And it works. So if you think about an Arduino system, this, this is very rudimentary. You've gone from controlling a light on the board itself to now actually controlling three separate lights and creating a very basic rudimentary traffic light system. But to show you the power of embedded computing or the power of devices like this is that you can connect, remember the input output thing that we talked about in terms of pins? You can actually create an input. So if you have a device or a camera that sees that this section of the road has too many cars compared to this section of the road, you can then adjust your code real time to say that for the section that has too many cards, too, too many cars, release them much faster. And then for the one that has few cars, let them slow down so that we reduce the traffic on this side. So you are looking or sensing using a sensor at the, tr at the amount of traffic on one side of the road. And then your software is adjusting real time to determine which section of the road needs to be given priority depending on the amount of traffic. And you can actually build this with an Arduino system. Of course, your lights have to be brighter. Of course, your, um, your software has to be much more robust. It cannot run off of a laptop. It has to be running on the traffic lights itself or from a remote center. But the principle is the same, right? And for us, this is really why it's important to understand the basics of embedded computing or the basics of this kind of um, hardware, software control of devices because there are just so many ways that you can expand the possibilities with the right sensors, with the right outputs. Maybe it's a motor, you can open a gate, you can um, turn on a light, you can send a drone in the sky and then tell it to move to specific locations. And all of this can be done with simple software like the Arduino system. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, it's been a very interesting transition from the previous video where we simply um, uh, turn the light on the board on and off and now we're actually using breadboards and creating specific signals going to each and every single one of these LEDs. Very basic introduction um, and we're hoping that we'll keep building on from this. So please look out for the next video and we hope you will enjoy it as much as you did this one. Thank you and bye.